want to welcome everybody from Facebook. Give them a big round of applause. Amen. Come on. God bless you. And if, with us, joining with us, I want you to go to 1 Kings chapter 17. Thank you, Pastor Zane. 1 Kings Pat. Uh, chapter 17, going to go start at verse 7. And you can follow along on the overhead if you like. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up. Everybody say, the brook dried up. Anybody ever had your brook dry up? Come on, man. Help me out. You ever been so full of God at some time and then you feel so dry? You ever been there? I have. How about when you're fighting sickness or something? It just doesn't seem like you're getting the blessing that you want to come through. But God is still there. Because there had been no rain in the land. Why was there no rain in the land? Because the prophet prophesied, the very guy that had to get out. Let me, let me give you just a little scenario. <clears throat> Elijah went there. Do you guys remember the story? And uh, these prophets were all dancing around and said, Our God, Baal, is God. And he said, Really? Well, let's, 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 have a, let's have a test here. And now one guy against 450 prophets. Y'all know the story? I'll tell you if you don't. So what happened was, is 450 prophets, he said, I'll tell you what, let's make a bundle of sticks, and you pray to Baal, and you ask him to light that thing on fire. Wait, wait, wait. So as the day went on, the prophet gets a little bit of a smart alecky. Come on, somebody. Elijah goes, well, maybe he's deaf. Uh, maybe he can't hear you yell a little louder. Maybe he went to sleep. Maybe Baal. He's making fun, Okay. Then what does he do? This, this is an awesome story. He sits there and goes, okay, my turn, my turn, all right? Sometimes we need to say to the devil, my turn, you're going to stop in the name of Jesus. Come on. Can I get an amen? Get your hands off my family. Get your hands, come on somebody, you're not going to take my daughter or granddaughters to hell with you? No, you're not in the name of Jesus. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about, and you need to warfare, all right? So anyways, he says, but, but stop, stop. Go and get some water. Drench that thing and make it as wet as it can be. And then he stood back and said, God, do your stuff. And fire came and burned it up. And guess what? The prophets were slain. And what happened? All of a sudden, Jezebel hears about it. She said, wait a minute, I'll go out. What does Elijah do? He takes off running. He takes off running. He just defeated 450 prophets but he takes off running and where does he end up first of all he said it's not going to rain for three and a half years and that what he said so now there's no rain so here we are in this story and it says he's by a brook okay and the word of the lord came to him saying in verse 9 arise and go to zarephath which belongs to sidon sidon and zarephath if you look at it was jezebel's hometown now god wants him to go back into this thing not to worry and he goes see we overlook a lot of those parts in the word and dwell there See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was gathering some sticks. And he called her and he said, please bring me a, a little water in a cup. I'm thirsty. Can you get me something to drink? And she said, and as she was going to get it, he called out and said, oh, by the way, bring me a morsel of bread also in, in your hand. And she said, as the Lord God lives, in other words, she's saying, I promise you, I'm telling you the truth. As the Lord God lives, she goes, I do not have bread. I only have a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I'm gathering these couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat and then die. This is it. This is all we have left. We're going to die. And then the prophet said, Elijah said to her, Hey, don't fear. Go and do as I have said and make a small cake from it first. And then bring it to me, and afterwards make some for yourself and your son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day of the Lord sends rain on the earth. You're going to have food in the midst of no rain. You're going to have everything you need. So she went her way and did according to the word of Elijah. And she said, and he and her household ate for many days, verse 16, the bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken. Aren't you glad that the jar still runs? Come on, somebody. God is not dried up on your behalf. He is still spilling what you need. And what we see in this story is God's promise to give you enough until it comes. Everybody say, God is going to give me 
until it happens. Come on, somebody. Some of you may be waiting on something from the Lord. You just wait and continue to do what you're doing. God will supply. He told her, listen, your, your oil is going to be full. You're going to have enough bread to eat for you and your son until the rain comes. So just keep doing and don't worry. And that's exactly what happened. We, we see there was a prophet. We see there was a problem. And we see that there was a mom that worried about her son and took care of it. We see that in these stories. When you expand on a little bit, you'll find out that we face unanswered prayer. God has still given us enough for what is next. Come on, somebody. He's given up enough for what's next. You know, when we sang that song, Waymaker, some of the lyrics say, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. And I think we ought to add, and a need meter. Come on, somebody, help me out. Because he's a need meter. Amen? Can I get amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, amen. There's a need meter. Why? Because he meets it. How good are you getting to meet God's, to meet your needs? Come on, somebody. Is he doing it? He's done it for me. There are times that sometimes I wonder where he's at. And in the last hour, I, feel, I find out that he comes through in the name of Jesus. He always does. So what I've learned, you know, so many people, and, and Paul and I just saw this in the last two or three years with some people we know that have been set free. Now I'm talking, now watch this. This could be you out there also. That have been set free from alcohol, drugs, whatever it was, because that was their need meter. Come on, somebody. That drug met a need to give them a little bit of time. Maybe a relationship they went out. They thought their need. Those things will dry up. Come on. They have no eternal value. And what happens is, we see they run to it. They run to drugs, alcohol, relationships. We've seen people go out of of places where they were set free for over a year and a half, and then go right, one guy went right back to heroin. Been set free. You know why? Because Tom, he didn't, re- he didn't meet the real need meter. Come on, somebody. Because if you really love Jesus, you'll give Jesus time to do what he's got to do in your life. Can I get an amen? Just because you don't feel good, well, I'm going to go do this, or I'm going to go do that. I told you the story. One guy told me, he said, I've lived for the Lord 15 years, but I remember you smoked marijuana. I asked God, I've been pretty good and I haven't sinned. And he said, God said, I'm going to bless you with some marijuana. He said he got in his car and drove right to where God led him. And he had a whole bag of reefer and he smoked and he says, thank God for it. How many know that's a lie from the pit of hell? You guys think I'm lying. We, we said the guy came up and told us this happened to us. He was talking to us. He said, well, then how did I know where the marijuana was? I said, because the demon spoke to you. And the devil, what? God is not going to, first of all, God's not going to break the law. This was about seven or eight years ago. You can't smoke marijuana. Yeah, well, you know what? Then he went and painted his hair all red and said, look, the fire of God's upon me. I said, no, it ain't. You got red spray paint in your hair. Stop it. There are people that all of a sudden, they go out of their way and say, this is what God did. Yeah. Listen, I had a, I had a lady one time take billow cloth. Walking well, billow, and all of a sudden she was doing it outside the door. When people come in, I had to stop. She said, well, we're doing the billow cross because when they walk under it, the glory of God. I said, the glory of God's already in the house when they walk in. The Spirit of God lives in me. Help me out. I'm not saying that's not wrong to do. I'm just saying people put too much in sacred cows, if you will, instead of the, the Holy Spirit. Come on, help me out. If I do this, 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 and this, God will bless me. No, if you just say, Father, here I am. I'm obeying your word. Fill me with your spirit. Direct me, Lord. Give me wisdom. God will give it to you. Amen? It's not point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You do it. Come on. There are people, listen, we know good Christian people that love God and they think they have to do ten or eleven things to get the blessing in God. Listen, God's going to meet your needs. And when that bond gets on you, you become religious. In 1 Kings 17, the whole nation had a problem. Famine was all over. It all started with Ahab and Jezebel and to the religious system of what they wanted Israel to do. She, they decided to follow her God, which was many gods, and guess what? They messed up. They worshipped Baal. So God took a challenge of the burning bundle of wet sticks. Whatever wet bundle of sticks you may be facing, God can still light it up. Come on, baby. God can still light up those bundles of sticks. He can make them wet. Can I get an Amen. Everything you depend on that is not from God will eventually dry up. Everything. Let me get my glasses back on. Some people depend on different things and saying, God, when you do this, listen, when you're searching the scriptures and you're praying, God is moving. All right. We make it so difficult when it's really not. 
God just wants us to do. The woman said, I only have enough for me and my son. I want you to look at this next one. Whenever you run to the resource for comfort instead of the source, you will dry up. Come on, somebody. Good preaching, Pastor. Read it again. Whenever you run to the source, this is all the bread I have. No, he said, guess what? God's going to do more. So many times we run to the source. Instead of running to the source, we look at the resource. We think that we have to have this much money to live. We have to live in this kind of house. We've got to drive this kind of car. If I only had this, if I only had that. Listen, we need to quit worrying about the resource and look to the source that supplies everything. Can I get an amen? Come on, go ahead. Plow a little bit. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's talking to you. Go ahead. Now, I'm preaching here myself, so get ready when I say this line. When I wrote this line down, I'm talking to myself, so I'm not, but I want you to listen. When I fill every moment with social media, how can God speak to me? I'm speaking to myself. Ding, oh, who is it? Ding, who is it? Ding, who is it? When you're in prayer and it dings and you stop praying just to look, I'm talking to myself here. Help me out. I'm learning not to just jump when my phone dings. Now, if I'm eating supper or something, it's different. But when I'm studying God and I don't respond back, you can rest sure Brian's doing something right now that's a little more important in his life right now. Can I get an amen? And I think so many times, I was telling Paula, we, we, we caught ourselves, even when she, we're driving, just talking, we're just like, you be driving, she be going, I said, put the phone down. Put the phone, I got my, let's, let's just have time together. Because it's so addicting. Listen, and these reels that are coming out, I'm watching them, they make me laugh, and I'm seeing some of them, and I'm going through, and all of a sudden, here comes a beep. Oh, I didn't want to hear that. Well, it came right out your phone. Why? And I find myself pushing myself into that way. Listen, we, we better watch ourselves that we don't put it before God. I'm preaching to myself there. Anything that you run to that is not of God will not sustain you. Now, I'm not saying your phone's bad. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, for me, it became, you know what you can do? I'll tell you what you can do. Your phone will let you know how long you've been on it. You can go to it, and it will show you. And you'll be amazed. I was on it nine and a half hours? What did I get from it? Nothing. Did I spend nine and a half hours in this? No, but I did on my phone. I'm preaching to myself here. Help me out. I'm just asking. Look at your phone at the end of the week, brother and sister of Christ, and see how many times you've been on it and see if it even works out the ten minutes a day you do this. (laughs) Can I get an amen? Ten minutes a day, which is nice to do your Bible study, but that's only 70 minutes, an hour and ten minutes. But I got nine and a half hours over here i got an hour and ten minutes in here. Can I get an amen? It's awful quiet in this Presbyterian church. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just preaching. Yeah. Something to think about, right? we got food. we got drink, got drugs, sex, social media. All these things are starting to fill everybody up. God sometimes will use the dryness that you feel to move you. Hey, the... The well has run dry over here. The brook, you're going to have to go over to the woman. He already had it planned out long before. And God's the one that told him to go to the one place. <clears throat> what do you do when the brook dries up? The prophet went to the woman. God provided food from the raven. Do you know the raven was considered a dirty bird? Look it up. It was in the old time. They weren't considered. But God used the dirty bird to fly that food and give it to Elijah. God can use whatever he wants. God provided that food, and from a brook, he provided water. Now, can you imagine? Let's let's just talk about this for a moment, everybody. Do we believe in the Bible? Sure we do. Do So here's a guy that's sitting at a brook, and the water's running, and that's how he gets his drink. And he says, well, God, you know, I need some food. So all of a sudden, could you imagine if you were hungry, and you needed food, and all of a sudden out in front of your door, you, <laughs> and there's a bird, some bread in this thing. You'd freak out. We read it, but he lived it. Huh? And it makes me understand that he's such a good God that he even used birds to carry the food 
to the prophet in the wilderness where the brook he told him to go to that he knew would dry up, but he already knew there'd be a widow over here that was so worried that her son and her were going to die that he was willing to send that prophet over to her to say, you know, if you give this prophet a little bit of this bread, guess what? All your oil and all your jars and everything, until the rain comes, he, God's going to supply. And God did it because he's a way maker and he's a promise keeper. Come on, somebody. <clears throat> That's why we need to add the word need meter to that song. Help me out. You can have one thing sustain you in one season and then go away. It can be sustaining you. Like, okay, I met a guy who told me, I pray three hours every morning. You need to do it. Well, if you're praying three hours every morning, praise the Lord. That's meeting your need. I get up and I pray. I do my prayer. I walk my walk. I do what I do. I'm fine. I, what God does for me may not do for you. May not be, everything may be different. He put a man to a brook. He told a woman to fill the jars. He'll meet your need. And then what we find out, what he sustains, all of a sudden may not be the same way he does it. I got to the point that I thought I had to do a prayer walk every day. I had to anoint my feet with oil. I prayed over the plug. All those are things. But then God let me know, you don't have to do that every day. You do it when I tell you to do it. Now you become religious at what you're doing. You understand where I'm going? And pretty soon you have no peace. Oh, God, I got to go do my prayer walk. Let me get my oil. Let me go. Father, I thank you. I pray in the Spirit. I walk around. I come back. And you're not really happy the way the joy is because God has something better for you to do. You know what he told me? Uh, this is a true story. Get in a truck. We got a truck. A little old red and white truck. We filled it up, one of those squeaky things, anointing oil. And we were around the church and all the buildings. We were spraying the sidewalks with oil. Come on. God had something better. I thank God that my daughters, some of them still anoint their feet with oil when they get up in the morning and they pray. I've anointed the tires of the, of the, of the, of the uh, outreach truck we had and our own vehicle. Wherever we go, Lord, let it be blessed. I believe in God to bless it. But just because I put oil on it, and if I didn't, doesn't mean it's still not going to be blessed. But God watches when you do something, and he moves when you do something. But when you think you have to do it every single time, it can become a sacred cow. But also, you don't want the enemy to trick you and think you don't need to do it, too. So you need to listen to the Holy Spirit when he speaks to your heart. How did I know that this, that this guy you're looking at worked for the city of Braden would become a youth pastor from, from, from the city of Braden to a youth pastor? I had no idea. I remember looking at my wife saying, you think I should do this, leave the city of Braden, secure a job and all that, to do youth pastoring? And I've never youth pastored before. And, I'm, you know, I went to seminary. And it was my first time doing it. She said, yeah, and you know what? God was there. I mean, you know, God was there. God dried up. Our book is dried up. Stop trying to figure it out. Elijah was right where God told him to be, and the brook dried up. Elijah was waiting and watching, and he watched that brook dry up. His resource had ended with no direction where to go. Then God told him, here's what you do now. Someone in here may be waiting and online and watching with no answer from God in their next season. But I want to give you Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now, I'll be honest with you, I really don't like a light on my path. I like a big floodlight. But God doesn't always give you the floodlight. He gives you the light step by step. Everybody turn to your neighbor and say, step by step. Come on. He wants us to walk by faith. God will sustain you enough until the next word comes. Now you got to have something. Well, just wait on the Lord. Matthew 6, 34. You know what he tells us to do? Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own troubles. These two people right here will know what I'm talking about. It was September, and we still didn't have a place to meet. We've been meeting in my house and pastoring the church, doing, doing church here, getting ready to raise this church, doing both. We didn't have nowhere. But we just knew. We didn't worry, did we? we there wasn't, it, it gets a point where there's nothing you can do. You go drive, you look, there's nothing, Tom. There's nothing. Okay, we had no chairs. 
We had no PA yet. Come on. We had no building. We had nowhere to go. But we were believing January God was going to do something. Then all of a sudden we get a phone call from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that there's a group of young people from Assemblies of God Church that was recommended to come to our church that was an inner city and do inner city work. Well, I'm starting to think, thank God they're bringing them in. They can help do some door-to-door work also in a city just 15 miles north of where we were. God supplied, what was it, about 17 or 18 of them, right? Watch this. So all of a sudden, this woman here that I've been married to for 40 years, is my best friend in the whole world, said, y'all know some of the story, some of you don't know the story. All of a sudden, she says, hey, can we go into the YMCA thrift store? I'll only be in there a few minutes. How many know that's not true? Paula likes to shop in there. I don't know in it. But it's just the way she is, and she's good, man. A few minutes to her might be 70 minutes. All right, I don't know. Look at her saying, yeah, because it is. A few minutes to me means 10 minutes, right? Can I get an amen from some of the men? Help me out. <clears throat> She goes in there, and Jerry Parrish, I love you, Jerry, watching. Jerry says, hey, preacher man. I turn around, what are you doing? I told him, next thing you know, we got a building in Parrish. You can rent. I said, what's that? The old YMCA. Got a storefront in there. Really? Oh, wow. You need to meet the CEO. I said, well, who is he? He said, he's over and he's right here right now in the back room. He just happened to stop by. Guy comes out, he's about six foot six. He comes out, and the next thing you know, he says, oh, yeah, what kind of church I assembly got? Oh, you're... You're Pentecost. Come on, we need that out there. Hands me his card, says, call me. Next thing you know, we got the building. What are we going to do? Chairs. Oh, we got all the chairs you need. Oh, do you need a place to store your equipment? Help me out, somebody. Yeah, what equipment? <laughs> we have no equipment. But you know what? God brought in checks. All of a sudden, started coming. We got equipment. Am I telling the truth? And all of a sudden, we were here. And while we were here, it had a misty smell and all that. Then the COVID thing hit. It just was not. Then all of a sudden, the other place takes over, remodels the whole thing, puts a $100,000 air conditioner, new floors in. The church got all repainted, and we paid nothing. Help me out. Give it to us. And they cut our rent by $50 a month. Go ahead. But we had none of that. Three months, three and a half months away. None of it. But I told, huh? A member of the rainbow. Yeah, we saw the rainbow over coming out in this way when we were in the parking lot of things. Sure did. Yep. Can I get an amen? amen? Have you ever been confused with the spot where God blessed you and you still don't understand? Like, okay, let me put it this way, better way. I've had places where God really blessed. And I, like, for instance, Paul and I went to Gatlinburg to the place she met Christ. But God didn't keep her there. You ever been to a place where you see God blessing, but there's a reason that God moved you and had other ways to do? He doesn't want us to build an altar and stay there. He wants us to take what we got from there and minister to those out there. There's a dying world going to hell in a handbasket. And you know what? And some of those are church folk. Can I get an amen? Yeah. We've met church folk, and, I, and I'm not throwing a stone at anybody that's watching. But man, if you're still going to church, say, oh, it's okay if I drink liquor and do vodka. No, it isn't. It's okay if I smoke dope. No, it isn't. It's okay if me and my girlfriend live together. No, it isn't. Okay? The Bible says no. Well, I'm under grace. This past week... I ministered and I said, and I want you to listen because this, I believe, is going to help a lot of people. God does not forgive, let me finish my statement, your past, present, and future sins. God forgives your past and your present when you ask Him. But He can't forgive your future sins. It says if you sin, confess your sin and ask Him to forgive you and then He'll forgive you. And some lady on Facebook went off on this big thing that you don't ever have to ask for forgiveness anymore. For he said, Father, forgive them. And forgiveness is not scriptural to ask for. How many know that's incorrect? Come on. It's not in the Word. He said, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. So you people that think that God's already forgiven me of my future sins, he will when you ask him to. You can't live like the devil and think you're going to make it into heaven. Can I get an amen from somebody? Thank you, sister. But so many people think that. Well, if you were truly a Christian, you wouldn't do that. That's not true either. How many of you have ever done something you wish you didn't do as a Christian? (laughs) 
And did you ask God to forgive you? Yeah. Well, according to my sister, who we know, and if you're watching, we love and appreciate you, but I hope you understand, forgiveness is something that God gives us when we ask for it. On that same theory, he died, the Bible says in Isaiah, come on, that he died for my infirmities and bore all my sicknesses. Is that not what the Word says? And in that same theory, you never have to ask God to heal you, because he already did it. You still have to ask God to hear you. Paul talks about a friend of his that's bringing you the word and he's sick near to death, but he's still coming. There are people that still get sick. There's viruses, there's diseases, there's things out there. And when it hits you, you need to say, God, I thank you that by your stripes I'm healed. Lord, take this from me. I call upon your name and God will touch you and he will heal you in Jesus' name. There's still miracle working power in the word of the living God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on. You got to ask him. You got to ask him. Lord, I thank you that you've healed me. I thank you living in me. I thank you, Father God. Thank you for taking this from me in Jesus' name. <clears throat> you know, the upper room's only mentioned one time. One of the greatest moves of God was when they got baptized in the Holy Spirit and they saw fire on their head. But you never hear fire on the head of anybody else that got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And you never hear about the upper room anymore. Because that was the place that God empowered them to go out into the city and out into the world to see the miracles come forth in the name of Jesus. And they went in miracles. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm, I feel, I, I, this is a little funny thing I put in here. I'm just a bird bringing some bread with a message. Help me out somebody. Right? Amen. God has a lot of little birds out there. You and I. He uses the people who are listening that listen to Him to minister to people. God will use the dryness to move you to your next season. It's one thing to get water in the wilderness during a drought. It's another thing to go to a widow's house and get your next provision in the enemy's territory because that's where Jezebel was from. Dryness in your life is not a sign that he has left you. It is a sign that he is moving you to a new season of doing things. If you're not doing anything in your dry season, you're wrong. You need to be doing stuff even in the dry season. Listen, do you think that I get up every week and say, oh, I'm going to read the Word and get a message this week and do I? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I'm anxious. Sometimes I discipline myself. i got to go in there and i got to do it, especially if this past week I had a little scratch, a little dry cough thing going on couldn't sleep a little bit at night, okay, get up a little bit tired, but I still go in there in those kind of times and say, God, and the next thing you know, I'm walking around my room saying, thank you, Lord, thank you for the word, thank you, I give you praise and glory. Sometimes you got to make you do that, and guess what? God begins to fill you, come on, with his living water. Can I get an amen? amen. You should keep doing for the Lord even in your dry season. And can I say something? Maybe you can do better as a husband in your dry season of your marriage. Uh-oh, help me out. Ladies, maybe you can be a better wife in maybe a dry season of your marriage. Maybe as a parent in your dry season, you can be better as a parent. This doesn't have to do just spiritual. It can be your life and what you're doing. <clears throat> you can be a little bit better. How about a better employee? How about a better neighbor? You don't like that neighbor, you're left or right. But God is saying, that neighbor was put there, and God knows they're there, and you're the light of the world. How about you shine a little bit better and give them some living water, because they're dry already, and they don't know Christ. The greatest skill in life <clears throat> is walking through what you can control and what you cannot control. If I can do something, I know what I can do, okay, that's great. But what about a good skill is not knowing how to do it and still staying in control with the Lord and saying God can still do it. God can do stuff through me. He can do other things. When your dryness is still there, do everything without complaining and grumbling. Can I get an amen? amen. Well, now I've got to go to work. They're going to make me do this. Thank God you got a job, Jack. Oh, now my car thing went out. Thank God you got a car. You've got to go get it fixed. You've got to drive over and get tired. So what? 
I'm, I'm trying to do this on with Paula, trying to do everything we do without grumbling and complaining. Like when they did the floor here. Well, we might not have a Sunday. Where are we going to? Don't worry about it. God's got it covered. If we have to meet outside, we'll meet outside. Guess what? They got it done. Doing everything without grumbling. Okay, I need something delivered at my house. We're going to get some earphones and head things. They're not coming in yet. They got a back order. So what? We'll wait. Can I get an amen? Do everything without grumbling. You know that, and she knows I appreciate it. Patty texts me on my phone. She's the lady here. Oh, the air's out in the children's room, but we got an air conditioner. Okay, praise the Lord. Thank you. All right, thanks for letting me know. Oh, we didn't have this and didn't have that. Uh, we're going to have to put the chairs over here. Okay, thank you. No, no problem. Praise the Lord. Oh, we're going to do this. Again. Praise the Lord. Thank you for letting me know. I appreciate it. There's some things that, oh, my gosh. <clears throat> well, we didn't do that. We didn't. Just do the best you can in the season you are in without complaining and grumbling. He's a need meter. Don't try and make people do what or receive what you went through. It may not be their brook or their widow that they have to see that you had to see. Everybody's brook may be different. Everybody's widow may be different that they walk. We're not all the same. <clears throat> Joel, would you come up here for a moment? And I'm going to ask Zane to come up. I'm going to put you on the spot. <clears throat> these are two men that had two different ways one was with Christ walked away and came back to Christ you're going to hear what God used to bring him back to Christ and the other one his wife prayed and how he came okay share it right here let him know I'll keep the microphone real close so you can go ahead and we'll be over here so um God used a dog uh, let me say a what a dog okay he used birds, and now we got a dog. Come on. Yeah, a dog to shake me to my core and to bring me back to the cross. And like I've said before, it wasn't a preacher. It wasn't Christian television. It wasn't anything like that. It was a dog. And see, the relationship we had with that dog, God knew. See, the Bible says that Jesus rebukes and chastises those that he loves. Mm-hmm. And sometimes he has to get the stick out to bring you to him. And um, so it was through the loss of the dog that God broke me and brought me back to him. Come on. Go give a line of prize. He used bird, a dog. What about a donkey? Remember the donkey? It was a donkey God used. We all have a different brook that dries up. We all may have something different. God used a dog, and he still ministers to people through that. His testimony. I, I had a, a life with drugs and alcohol, mostly a lot of alcohol, and it was destroying our marriage. Uh, the kids were falling away from us. But Karen had a group of people praying for me. And through prayer, God woke me up. One morning I just decided to go to church. <laughs> it wasn't something I normally do. And I went and heard a bunch of men giving testimony of what God did in their lives. And I could not believe these men were going through the same things that I were going, I was going through. And when I heard what God did in their life, and through all the prayers of all the people that knew me and Karen, Karen was faithful in church. I was not. But when God touched me that day and I went to church, and I gave my life to Christ, and he turned me around, and I just, I gave everything to him. And now, look how much he's blessed our marriage, blessed my life, our life. It's been un unbelievable. God is so good. Come on, now, give a round of applause. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You see, everybody's brook could be different, okay? And everything can be different and change. In mine, it was a relationship. I had a girlfriend, thought we were going to get married. I decided to come back to Christ. I was in a rock band. They all dumped me, dumped me. And how many know that I was at home, 20 years old, hair down to the shoulders length, no job, <clears throat> not many skills. And God ended up allowing me to play my guitar over the 
the CB radio, and a lady whose handle was Chip Dip. You got you know, the dip for Chip, Chip Dip. <coughs> <She's> <coughs> Excuse me. Where's my drink? <coughs> Chip Dip, okay. And she said, Music Man, what is that, what is that song you're playing? I told her it's a song, it's called Wolf Song by Resurrection Man. It's Resurrection Man, Christian rock band. It wasn't too popular. She said, well, I work with a Christian. And next thing you know, I met Paula, and here it is. See, see, the brook that dried up was a good thing because I met a brook with a lot of water on it. Come on, somebody that knows how to cook. <laughs> Best friend, Christian, Okay, brought me to church where I met the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I met the Holy Spirit at Church of the Cross. And I got all those things. And little did I know that when God brought us together that he saw ministry ahead. Helped plant a church in India. Helped financially in China. Sent a guy to Greenville, Tennessee. Had three different church plants done. And that helped support 60 missionaries. How many know that that's not tuning the horn? That's just doing in the dry season, continuing to do that God fills with rivers of living water and continue to do. You may not, you may not understand, but God has got a plan that we've all heard for your life. Okay? Well, what is it? I don't know. Only you do. You just keep doing what God told you to do and he will open those doors to where like four months ago, a lady at Burger King got born again in a parking lot from two people who didn't even hardly have anything in their life. They didn't have two nickels to rub together when we got together. Little did we know he'd give us three daughters and nine grandchildren. One grandchild's in heaven, okay? Sad, but we're rejoicing. We'll see Kylie one day there. So I don't know what you've been through, but I'm going to tell you now. Drugs is not the river in the brook you need to look to. Alcohol is not the, the, the brook you need to supply your needs. Sexual relationship with somebody you're living with is not what you need. If you're doing that, can I tell you something? That's called fornication, and fornicators will not make it into the kingdom of God. It's as simple as that, okay? God loves you, though. He died on the cross to pay for all the sin. He took it all upon him so you and I could have a way into heaven. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And it's only because of Jesus Christ. And Romans tells us that if we confess our mouth, come on somebody, and believe in our heart that God rose him from the dead, he sitteth at the right hand of the Father. If we ask Jesus into our heart, we become born again. And once we become born again, God has a better way for us. For all you that are struggling with the liquor and the alcohol and maybe uh, uh, doobies, uh, marijuana, whatever, God will set you free. Well, you know what? I like doing it. Well, you know what? You need to find out what God likes for your life and not the things that your flesh likes. Can I get an amen? And God has good things ahead. Now, let me also say this. John 10.10 10 is pretty, uh, pretty plain. He said the enemy is the one that will come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus Christ came to give you life and more abundantly. So I want to ask this. If you'd like to right now, everybody, could you bow your heads with me? Sing, could you go up there? Bow your heads with me. This, this, this is an important day. Today is your day, July 24th. A day is going to be great. Just say, Dear God in heaven, forgive me of all my sins. Jesus, come into my life. I believe you died for my sins. I believe you rose from the dead on the third day. And I really believe you're seated at the right hand of the Father. And you make intercession for me daily. Hallelujah. Daily. He's a good God. I'm going to say it again. He's a good God. He desires. And then Jesus said, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came to give you life and give it more abundantly. Can I tell you? There's no high like the most high. Okay. And you can't OD on JC. Come on, somebody. There are many people that have been drug addicts, 
Because I know this is old time preaching, but it's the truth. We, we, we were just talk, talking to a brother this morning how all everybody talks about the good. Thing. I had a preacher one time say, I pray and God gives me the first parking spot because I have the favor of God. God is not sitting in heaven worrying if you get the first spot or not. You may be a little fat. He may want you to park way away, so you got to work some of that fat off. All right? But everybody, t- they, 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 they take the gospel, and, they, and, and they, they make it like it's a sugar daddy book. Yeah, come on, can I get an amen from somebody? He loves you. Quit playing with the gospel. It's time to come all the way over. It's your soul, man. It's not worth it. And when people tell you you can live like the devil and still make it to heaven, they're lying through their teeth. You can't do that. Book of John says, be not deceived. He that doeth righteous of God, he doeth not as of the devil. Well, what are you condemning? No, I'm not, I'm not throwing a stone at anybody. I'm not condemning anybody. I'm just saying that Jesus has a better way. Can I get an amen? Jesus has a better way. What is that better way? Jesus Christ. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Listen. I would not change the life I have now for the life that I used to do 40 years ago. I'm not the same person. And I'm glad I'm not. Can I tell you something? I'm not the same person I was five years ago. Because we're ever growing from glory to glory. What I just tell you? I'm looking at my phone and seeing how much time I'm on my phone versus how much time I've been with my father. Come on, somebody. He's your father, too. Can I get an amen? Not saying the phone's bad. I'm just saying that I think sometimes we need to take inventory. Just like Elijah. He's looking at the the, the brook drying up. And he's the one that gave the word. Ain't going to rain for three and a half years. He's the one that said, whatever, this is going to happen. And God said, okay, you spoke it. That's what's going to happen. And then he said, let it rain for three, and it opened up. So I want to encourage you. Jesus is Lord. He loves you. If you've been sitting at home watching the gospel online for two or three years, oh, I don't need to go anymore. The Bible says, forsake not the fellowshipping of the saints. Don't let the enemy keep you from coming and fellowshipping with church folks, wherever your church is, okay? Now, some people, they have to. They can't get out. That's a different story. But, and they're online media people. I get it. But we see the hour approaching. It's getting closer and closer. Girls, would you go up there, please? And we need to understand that the Waymaker is not just a song we sing. It's a song we sing with passion and conviction. He is a Waymaker. And he loves you and I. And we're going to do something special for you today. Something that we usually don't do because of the Internet. And Facebook, okay? Because you don't have all the technology to make it sound beautiful. Okay? But could I have the congregation stand up that's in here with us today? And I want you guys out there to sing this song. It's called Waymaker. We're going to sing the chorus. We're going to sing it. And I want you to join with it. And as you do it, I want you to let the chains and the bondages of religion and everything just drop off. And you worship God and be filled with His Spirit. And let Him touch you right where He is. Because he's a need meter. He will supply your need. And he'll answer your prayers because he loves you. So join with the ladies as they sing this song. Here we go. Come on.
I want to let you know that is who he is. He's a way maker for you out there. I want to let you know as we get ready to go off, we want to let you know God will supply every need that you have. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, he's a way maker.